This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work with another Wolf Responds. Here we are three weeks before the election, and I want to talk to you about libertarianism, about the idea of crony capitalism. In fact, about all these ideas about a capitalism that is pure or free or perfect or competitive, lots of good words, rather than government-infested or government-dominated or crony or other bad words. What am I getting at here? I think there is a tendency for the people who want desperately to hold on to the capitalist system, to find a way of justifying it, of excusing all the things that are wrong with it, by finding a scapegoat in the government. That's right. If there's things going on in the beloved capitalism that we don't like, extreme inequality, instability of the business cycle, immense power concentrated in a handful of firms, domination of the government by those firms, by capitalists donating the money that keeps the political parties functioning and that allows the candidates to buy the TV time needed to win major elections. If all of those and many more ugly dimensions of modern capitalism are bothering you, say the libertarians, say the critics of crony capitalism, it's because the beauty of capitalism has been sullied. The perfection of capitalism has been marred. And it's the government that does that. The powerful, evil, intrusive government that should, of course, have kept its hands and its rules and its regulations and its tax collectors away from private capitalism, because that would have allowed private capitalism to do its wonders for us all. Libertarians want liberty, the liberty of the capitalist system to do its thing, go its way, heal its own failures, and we'll be all better off if we only get the government out of our economy, if we stop making it useful for capitalists to cultivate special relationships with government officials so that we get crony capitalism, capitalism sullied, undone, undermined by the government and the relationships between the government and capitalism. So what's my beef here? Why am I critical? of this line of thinking, especially why am I critical when, which is true, those who don't like crony capitalism, those who criticize the intrusion of the government into capitalism in modern times, tend to agree with critics of capitalism like me that today's capitalism is ugly, is failing, is counterproductive, ought to be changed. But while we agree that there's a lot to be upset about and a lot that's wrong, we could not be further apart when it comes to understanding why the capitalist system is so dysfunctional right now and what to do about it. So let me make the difference really clear. I'm an economic historian, that is, within the framework of economics, I spent much of my life teaching economic history, how economic systems have changed throughout human history, what causes the change, what happens when the changes are brought forth, and so on. So here's one thing I learned. In the history of capitalism, from its earliest days to the present, capitalism has always been obsessed about the government, always deeply intertwined with the government, 
always involved in getting favors and subsidies and breaks from the government, always busy trying to shape what governments are, what they do, and how they work. A capitalism without the government is a utopian fantasy. It's never been there. In the earliest days of capitalism, the capitalists fought against the government they were angry at because it was dominated by the feudal lords who were the dominant group before capitalists got there. The fight for parliament, the fight for democracy, the fight for elections instead of monarchies and feudal lord dominance was the capitalist plan to get a government that would serve them, which they got, punctuated by the American and French revolutions, when they got it in a violent way. And ever since then, capitalists, because they gather into their hands the wealth of society, have been the dominant influence on the politicians who depend on that wealth to run for office, to rise in the ranks of their political parties. They need the help, the support, the money, the prestige that comes from the capitalist class. It's a much longer, trickier game politically to rely on the working class. So most politicians, yeah, doing what they do today, sucking up to where the money is and where the power is. And in capitalism, we all know where that is. So it's a fantasy, a utopian fantasy. And as such, I have no complaint about it. Just don't mistake a dream, a fantasy of a magnificent world you're imagining for what is going on now. But there's another side to this crony capitalism, this libertarian kind of thinking that is even more important to criticize. Capitalism, in my judgment, is what is causing the problems of the world today, including the behavior of the government, which capitalists are more influential on than anyone else. It's the capitalists who maintain the lobbyists who literally write the laws in much of the United States and much of the capitalist world. They donate to the candidate, they donate to the party, they fund the party, they pay for the lobbyists who write the laws. I mean, who are we kidding? The government, if you don't like it, is the creature of the capitalist, and it always was. But there's again even more to be critical about. Who fires you when you lose your job? A capitalist. 90% of the time, it's a capitalist. Who throws you out of your house if you can't make the mortgage? It's a capitalist. What the libertarians do is focus on people deflecting their anger against who's bothering them by losing their job, being fired, being evicted. You should be angry at the capitalist who's doing that. But instead, the libertarian redirects your anger at the government. It allows the capitalists to walk away unblamed, unaccused, uncriticized. They, you see, are innocents. It's the big government that does all the trouble. As if we don't have to ask the question, why does the government behave that way? When there are plenty of examples through history, when masses of people have risen up and demanded and gotten the government to behave differently from what had been the norm before. Capitalism doesn't have cronies, so that you can erase the crony and leave us with a pure, perfect capitalism. There never was one, there isn't one now, and Blaming the government is very useful for the capitalists, but only leads to the dead end of libertarianism in which you don't seem to have to analyze why the government is playing footsie, cutting deals with crony capitalists, and why it's serving the capitalists. 
why it took a century of American capitalism before we ever had a minimum wage, but the subsidies to capitalists are as old as Methuselah. Come on, folks. It's time not to be dissuaded from the critique of capitalism by pretending that capitalism is wonderful if only we could get that nasty outside influence of the government away. The government isn't outside. It has been the object of capitalist engagement from day one. We live in what used to be called a political economy. No need to separate economics from politics because in the real world they never were separated. We live in a capitalist economic slash political system. If the government acts in awful ways, as indeed it often does, that too is a problem of capitalism. It doesn't drop out of the sky as some intrinsic evil. This is Richard Wolff for Democracy at Work.